Attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. It is a hot, humid early Friday evening here in South Florida, but no worries, the roof is going to be closed and it is time for baseball. As the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the Yankees against the Marlins in the first of three from Lone Depot Park in Miami, Florida. Hi everybody and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Paul O'Neill. I'm Michael K. Before we even start, a lot of things have happened with the Yankees today. So let's take a look. Ian Hamilton will open for the second straight game. Randy Vasquez will follow him. He was called up today. Johnny Brito also recalled from AAA. And the reason all these moves needed to be made, Nestor Cortez placed on the 15-day IL with left rotator cuff strains. Not good. Not good at all. We'll hear more from Nestor a little bit later on with Meredith. So the bulk guy is going to be Randy Vasquez. And when he's pitched for the Yankees, he's pitched well. He has pitched well. I mean, he's recalled and I think this will be his last recall. I think he's here for good. He has taken the ball a couple times and he has done really good things. He's got a good fastball, a good slider, and he shows that he has good demeanor on the mound. Big opportunity for him to continue to pitch well for the Yankees. Absolutely. And he has pitched well, as Paul said, in the games that he has been up here in the big leagues. One and one. But look at the ERA a sparkling. 1.17. Now, one of the guys that he really has to worry about with this Marlins team, they don't hit a lot of home runs, but they do hit. And the guy at the top of that is Luis Arise. He's leading the National League in hitting. Yeah, I mean, he comes in. He led the, the, the league last year as a batting title in Minnesota. This year, got an opportunity to do it again, and he's well on his way. He is a contact hitter. You're not going to see him leave the yard very much, but you're not going to see him strike out very much either. Puts the ball in play, a great contact hitter, and sets the table for the Marlins. He's really outstanding. As we said, the Marlins do get a lot of hits. They don't score as many runs as they should because they don't hit home runs. As for a rise, first in average, first in strikeout percentage, sixth in OPS, and a sparkling war of 4.3, which is eighth in the National League. Now, we mentioned the bad news about Nestor Cortez, not what anybody wanted to hear, particularly Nestor. He's going to talk with Meredith Moragovitz when we get back right here on Yes. between the Yankees and the Marlins. Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Yankees pitcher Nestor Cortez. Nestor, some tough news today landing on the IL with a left rotator cuff strain. When did you first start feeling something in your shoulder? Um, I didn't really feel anything until yesterday, but I, I felt uh, more, more soreness than usual throughout the week. Um, attempted to throw a bullpen yesterday and I just couldn't put any velo behind the baseball. Um, and I felt like it was the right decision to say something because I didn't want to put the team in a predicament where they had to call up somebody the same day or me go out there for an inning and not be able to finish. You pitched so well in your first game back against Houston. How frustrated are you by this? Yeah, it's really frustrating, uh, especially since I've been feeling good uh, leading up to that to that day. Um, and I've, I was, you know, command was pinpoint. Um, I was throwing hard. Uh, everything was going so well. Um, but but you know the uh, sh the shoulder injury just just came back. You had said in the clubhouse four weeks no throw. Aaron Boone said it's going to be a tough time frame for you to make it back. In your mind, are you done for the year, or you think you'll be back out there? No, I mean I I never want to be done for the year in my mind. I I'm here even though if I can't come back, I want to be as supportive as possible um, and be here for the guys. We're gonna take it one step at a time. Right now it's four weeks no throw. Um, I know the buildup is going to be pretty long, but even even if I have to be in the bullpen come playoff time, um, hopefully I can be ready. Nestor, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Plenty more to come here on the S Network when we get back. Michael Kay will be joined by Paul O'Neill. First pitch coming your way after the break. Every moment more by the new Defender 138 Seats Infinite Adventures. And by Stop and Shop, feed the moment. But good thing. Paul O'Neill, that this roof is closed because it is super, super hot out there. Wow. Like walking on the sun. Or it really <laughs> is. It really is. And you can see why they need a dome here in Florida with the rain and the extraordinary heat. Bottom line is it's 90 degrees, but it feels a lot hotter 
outside. So the Yankees and the Marlins start a three-game set. Right now, the Marlins are barely in the third spot in the wild card in the National League, while the Yankees are four games back in the loss column, five games overall from that third and final wild card spot. So it's an important series for both teams. The Yankees just lost two out of three against the White Sox, and uh, the Marlins come off winning two out of three in Cincinnati. And uh, it's an interesting team, Paul, because as we mentioned in the open, they have a high batting average, but they don't hit home runs, so they don't score a lot of runs. Yeah, and they've actually added. Uh, I mean, they went out and added a couple bats. Berger, obviously, uh, having a great year, 26 home runs. So they're trying to add some offense and hold on to that last wild card spot. And the Yankees, obviously, are trying to make up ground, and losing the first series was not a good thing. They've struggled in their last 10 series dating back to the beginning of July. They've won one, and that was um, – the Royals they swept the Royals they've lost seven and they split three uh, so they have to start winning obviously right now the mark to win the American League wild card is listed at 90 and the mark to win the National League third wild card happens to be just 84 so the Marlins have a little less heavy lifting to do the Yankees to get to 90 have to go 31 and 46 in their final 47 games so you, you go around the Yankees they still seem very positive. They still seem very confident. But at some point, they do have to start winning games because you're running out of a road. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they're going to have to put together a streak, and they have not had a streak. And around baseball, you've seen some teams go 10-0. and I mean, you see Seattle 9 out of their last 10. The Yankees have put themselves in a position where they're going to have to put together a special streak to put themselves in the position where they want to go. And that's the playoffs. All right, so the Marlins take the field. We'll take a look at the, tonight's Yankees starting lineup, which is brought to you by TikTok. You've got Isaiah Kanapalefa at third base leading off. Batting second, the DH Aaron Judge. Labor Torres at second will hit third. Cleaning up right fielder Giancarlo Stanton. Harrison Bader in center field will bat fifth. Batting sixth, the rookie shortstop Anthony Volpe. Jake Bowers at first. Kyle Higashoka will catch. And playing left field and batting ninth, it is Oswaldo Cabrera. And that lineup is going to face the left-hander of the Marlins, Jesus Lizardo. This will be his 24th start. His numbers are very good. 155 strikeouts in 130 and a third. Obviously, he'd like to cut down on the walks. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher scouting report, Paul. Well, you talked about heat and not out outside. He brings the heat. Averages 96.8 miles an hour on his fastball, which is tied with Garrett Cole for fourth in the MLB on starters. Trying to bounce back. He's had a really good year, as you spoke of, Michael. But the last two outings, four runs in both, including three home runs in his last outing. And expanding the zone, 31% chase rate, which is eighth highest in the National League. So you got to swing at strikes. Let's check out the defense behind him. It is presented by Buick. De La Cruz in left, Chisholm Jr. in center. Sanchez is in right. Infield, Berger, Wendell, Arise, and Bell. That's third to first. Cortez behind the plate, catching Luzardo. And Jorge Soler will lead off, and he is the DH. Lizardo's ready. Conifaletha is ready. Let's do it here in Miami. And the first pitch is a strike. We're underway. DJ Rayburn is the home plate umpire. Angel Hernandez at first. James Hoy at second. And John Lipka is over at third. One and one. First baseman Bell way off the line at first base. Now moving a little closer. He heard you, Mike. Yeah. Well, he didn't think he'd get to first. Count two and one. Fly ball, right center. Chisholm back, makes the play in front of the track. One down here in the first. So one away, and that'll bring up Aaron Judge. A lot of Yankee fans here, as you can hear, as he gets a nice hand. Some booze as well. Oh, Aaron Judge jerseys as we look around the ballpark, Michael. You, you know, the New York fans always travel well, we've talked about. But so does number 99 Yankee jersey. It travels all over the country now. And also, Paul, you know, 
not just South Florida. It's really, really, really South, South Bronx. <laughs> a lot of transplanted New Yorkers down here. Uh, uh, you know what I appreciate about it is the Italian food. They've brought it down from the Bronx, from New York. Really? They get to enjoy it here in South Florida. And you agree that it's good? Oh, it's really good. I keep telling you, Michael, I'm from Cincinnati, where Olive Garden's our, our, our staple Italian. So, yes, it's very good. One and two on Judge. Hitting 250 in the 12 games off the IL, nine hits and 36 at bats. Bounced up there, two and two. A little quick pitch there. And, and Luzardo, if you'll see what he does, you talk about expanding the zone, it's usually with his slider and his changeup. His fastball is good enough, obviously, at 96.8 miles an hour average to get by in the strike zone. That was 99 to 99. <laughs> following the temperature gauge outside. And Lazardo deals. And Judge works a walk. He's been doing a lot of that lately. Pitchers being very careful with him. Oh, you got to understand, uh, until somebody in this lineup shows that they're going to make them pay for walking there and Judge, especially these teams that they're, they're in contention, like the Marlins, I mean, you're going to pitch around Aaron Judge every opportunity, especially when you get behind in the count. So here's Glaber Torres with a nine game hitting streak. Want to know, we told you Lazardo tends to be a little wild. Eight and six, 3.52, a lot of strikeouts, but more walks than he'd like. Marlins wearing the uniform that they wore when they beat the Yankees in the 2003 World Series. They had a lot of those. World Series players on the field before the game celebrating the 20th anniversary of that championship. They've won two here in Florida. There's a strike. Yeah, actually, Josh Beckett threw out the ceremonial first pitch with a lot of his teammates around him. And remember, he was the big, uh, he was their ace to put down the Yankees, get the last out. I think it was Jorge Posada grounded back to him, right? Yep. And they started him on short rest that day, mm -hmm. Jack McKean did, and it worked out. So they won in six games. Two and two on Glaber. Now three and two. Grounded to short. Let's see if they turn two. There's one on the first. It's a double play. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. Yankees nothing. Marlins coming to bat. TikTok, Soler, the DH will lead off. Luis Arise bat second and plays second. Josh Bell at first. Then it's Chisholm, De La Cruz, and Sanchez in the middle of the order. Bottom third, third baseman Jake Berger, Joey Wendell, and then Nick Fortes will catch him bat ninth. And they're going to face the Yankee opener, making his second straight start odd, Ian Hamilton. This will be his third opening appearance, 2-1, and 1.63 pitch very well out of the bullpen. And let's check out the Nissan pitcher's scatter report. Well, you mentioned it, Michael, back-to-back, -back, opening again after a nice clean inning in Chicago on Wednesday. Maybe two, question mark? I don't know. I mean, with the, the question marks of the pitching staff, Maybe you go to, to get two innings out of him tonight. We'll have to wait and see. And he has had an excellent season. So far, I mean, a great 1.63 ERA, which is fifth best in the American League with pitchers over 30-plus innings. Well, the Yankee defense is presented by Buick. Cabrera's in left, Bader in center, and Stanton's over and right. In the infield, IKF, Bolte, Torres, and Bowers third to first. Tagashioka behind the plate. Saw judges the DH. Hamilton is on the mound. Hamilton, the first Yankee to start back-to-back -back team games since CC Sabathia on July 11th and the 16th in 2010. And he did that because he started the last game before the All-Star break and the first game after the All-Star break. Now, he's the first Yankee to do it in three days or fewer since George Pipgress on <laughs> July 29th and 30th in 1928, both in Cleveland. Katie Sharp. 
provided that to us. In the first game, George put the first six batters on base. They all scored. He was quickly taken out of the game. They ended up losing 24 to six. Next day, he pitched an eight inning complete game, taking a 4-2 loss. Wow. Had a good night's sleep. Went home and just turned the, turned the page. Huh? Yeah. And got another loss. <laughs> 0-2 on Solaire. Arise has been leading off for most of the season, but they have flipped it up late, tried to get Solaire going. Solaire is having a decent power season, 28 for 62. Yeah, this is his third consecutive game as a leadoff hitter. Obviously, Arise is your prototypical leadoff hitter. Solaire's done a good job. Actually, the first game he did, he had to walk off home run, so Kind of sticking with it, see if it has something to do with it. Marlins were 53 and 40 going into the All Star break. Since then, they are 6 and 16 in the second half, trying to hold on. Swing and a miss. Solaire down on strikes. All right, Paul, it's time for the keys to the game, brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, you got to pick up the pieces. I mean, another bad series in Chicago. Well, let's move on to Miami and see what happens. And it means a lot. Obviously, the Yankees need to win, but the Marlins are third wild card right now, half a game ahead of the Cubs and the Reds. And it takes a village. I mean, when I'm here with another opener, it's going to take, you know, Randy's going to come in next, then you're going to get to the bullpen. So, uh, you know, who knows where the pitching is going to go tonight. What a season for a rise for a while. He was flirting with 400. Now he's at 369. Has not had a great August nine for 37. That's 245. Center field. Bader puts it away. Two down. Yeah, every once in a while, Michael, I see something on the field that reminds me uh, of playing again. And it, it was last inning and Aaron Judge, you know, as a base runner, you're going to try to break up two. But, you know, it's your it's your fault if you don't get down. And you see this arise double play. He's like, oh, boy, you know, you got to get down and get out of the way or they'll hit you right in the helmet. In the old days, he used to try to do it. Yep. Oh, you could have had that, Michael. Oh, you want me to reach out for it? If Why it comes not? In here. As soon as you reach, I'll push you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little too close. Yeah, when you could see the seams of the ball spitting on a foul ball close, you know that came pretty close to the booth, right? Yep. Bell traded from the Guardians to the Marlins on August 1st for Gene Segura and Khalil Watson. And Wednesday in Cincinnati made team history, became the first Marlin to hit a home run from both sides of the plate in the same game. Power's never been an issue with Bell. As he goes down on strikes, that's a strong first inning for Ian Hamilton. He retires the Marlins in order and will go to the second. And in his Marlins career, ranks third in games, first in home runs, ribby, slugging, and war. Hasn't played here for a while. That one's fouled back. Last time he did play here, 2017, he won an MVP with 59 home runs. Yeah, a lot of good memories here, obviously, if you're Stanton. Coming back home, ballpark that you really owned for the first part of your career. Lose auto deals. Check the swing. Did he go? No, he did not, said Angel Hernandez. What's the over under with an argument with Angel Hernandez tonight? Huh? Well, let, let, well, he's not going to be, well, he'll be the home plate on part of tomorrow, so tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. All right. Did he go? No, he didn't. Well, the Marlins going to argue with him soon. <laughs> Two and two on Sten. And the lefty deals. 
Missed outside, so it's from 0-2 to 3-2. That one is punched in the center field. It's a base hit for Stanton. Lead off single for the Yankee right fielder. Yeah, we always talk about Stanton and his level swing. Uh, this ball up in the strike zone, but see how level the swing is? Actually got in on the label a little bit, but uh, you know, it's not going to keep him from getting the ball to the outfield. It's too strong. Here's Harrison Bader. And there's a strike. Bader throws his head back, didn't like that call. Arise shades up the middle. Bader really hits well against left-handers. Overall hitting 265. If you want a comp for Lazardo, look to Johan Santana. That one is looped into the left field. It's a base hit in front of De La Cruz. So a couple of soft singles for the Yankees. And they have runners on first and second, and nobody out. A ball off the end of the bat. But they all count. Michael, this is going to be a real test for you this week. And I mean, our booth is so high. Right. You, you really have to get a good read on, uh, you know, whether this ball is going to be caught, whether it's hit hard. So far, so good for you. You're going to have to tell me. Here's Volpe, pitch up and away. Anyway, the comp with Santana, Lizardo grew up idolizing him because he's kind of the same size, and that's why he loves throwing a changeup because of Santana. There's a strike, one and one on Volpe. Yankees threatening here in the second, beginning of this three game set. And the count one and two on Volpe. Volpe batting sixth in the order. <laughs> Trying to pick off Stan. He just gets back. Now the roof is closed and when you talk to people here, it's never open. Not even sure if it works because it's just so hot and it rains at a moment's notice. So they don't bother opening the roof. Yeah, even in April when you know the weather is gorgeous down here, it's very hard to top and the hitters don't like it. High fly, deep left. That could go. See ya. A three run home run for Volpe. Yankees on the board, they lead three nothing. Well, one swing of the bat and a big one for Anthony Volpe, his 15th of the year. Yankees on the board, three to nothing here. Well, his smile when he hits a home run is pure joy. <laughs> it's funny, I was just thinking, you know, somebody's still having a lot of fun playing baseball. Bowers crushes one to left center. That ball is... Caught at the wall. What a play by De La Cruz. He took an extra base hit away from Bowers. A brilliant catch. Wow, again, from our angle, you know, this looked like it was heading for the ball out of the ballpark. And what a play. Wow. Up wide open. Yeah, tip of the cap indeed. What a pick me up for a pitcher. Here's Higashioka. You know, Michael, you were talking about the roof, and I was saying, yeah, even that the hitters don't like it. They don't think they can see the ball as well. Now, there are windows that are actually kind of retractable, and they will open those once in a while. Now, left center field. Punched into right center. It's a base hit for Higashioka. 
Yankees fourth hit of the inning. Going back to the big blow here Anthony Volpe. You know with that close stance he still has no problem. Getting to that inside pitch a no doubter. So he kind of locks that front hip in but then he can drive against it. Big swing. 15 home runs now has 44 runs batted in and the single by Higashioka brings out Mel Stoudemire Jr. To talk with Jesus Lizardo. A lot of people concentrate on the batting average coming into today to 11. But others look at the power and the run production also. I don't know if you were watching on, on Wednesday, but David Cohn gave me a stat I couldn't believe. In terms of defensive war, mm -hmm. he's the second best defender in all of baseball, not just at shortstop, mm -hmm. right behind Juan DeFranco. Well, yeah, I think, you know, it, what gets lost is, you know, Anthony Volpe made the club out of spring training. He took the job, and, you know, he was supposed to be your eighth or ninth hitter. But with all the injuries and all the problems offensively, you know, he's been thrown to the leadoff spot. And now he's hitting six. So he's not in a comfortable spot. And when he went through the struggles, then it, it, they, they become glaring weaknesses because of nobody else was hitting. But, you know, if you break down what Anthony Volpe has done in his rookie year, pretty solid. No, Anthony doesn't think of himself as a 211 hitter. And obviously, the Yankees think that's going to be better. He thinks it's going to be better. But so far, his defense has been spot on. And he does drive in some runs. Mm -hmm. 20 stolen bases coming into the game. I mean, he's a guy in the future. You can always name numbers. But he's a guy in the future that you could look at as a 30-30 guy. And that's just not a, you know, that's not a given. But, it, it, you know, he has the capability to do that and then play defense too. Down goes Oswaldo Cabrera for the second out. Back to the top of the order in Conifaletha. There's a strike. One and one. There's a change up way out in front, one and two. Yeah, when you go 99 and then turn it over as a change up at 89, that's a uh, met. That is very hard to pick up from a hitter's eye. Still one and two. Lined in the center field. Chisholm makes the play. That'll do it. But the Yankees put a three spot on the board. The baby bomber, Anthony Volpe, goes yard his 15th home run of the year. When it lands, it's 3 nothing Yankees. The opener for the Yankees, third time he has done it this season. He told me the other day he likes to keep it as normal as possible. Well, guys, what do I mean by that? He was actually walking through the dugout as the Yankees were taking batting practice, and he ran out to the outfield. I said, you're going to shag balls right now? And he said, yeah, I have to keep it as normal as possible. He's just going to run a little bit less, but he didn't want to get out of his normal routine. He wanted to make sure he was comfortable on the mound. He treats this like any other outing, but he certainly has shined as a New York Yankee. One of the biggest factors, according to him, they believed in his stuff and believed in that Slombio in particular. Other teams told him not to necessarily throw it as much, where the Yankees really leaned in and said, use that pitch. That pitch is going to be big for you, and it has been all season long.
Yeah, what a find by them. And they seem like they have one or two of those finds in their bullpen every year. Ian Hamilton certainly has been outstanding. Here's Chisholm. And there's a strike on the outside corner. So Hamilton, in Wednesday's game, went one. Then they brought in Severino, and Severino struggled. Randy Vasquez is waiting to be the bulk guy, but Hamilton out for the second inning. Yeah, the scouting report. I mean, if you're Aaron Boone, you've got to try to piece things together. Obviously, with an opener, you know, you want to get through the first couple innings, but, you know, as good as Hamilton looked in the first inning, why not? Give him the ball for the second, try to get through this one just as easy. You know, he said the roof is hardly ever open. It's been open five times this year, and the Marlins are three and two in those five games. But today's not the day to open it. Ground it. And grabbed there by Torres. Couldn't get a handle on it. Chisholm's too fast. There's a base hit. <laughs> well, Chisholm has a lot of personality, too. He usually has different spikes on, different gloves on. I can't help but see him now, Michael, without playing the, you know, video games with Derek Jeter. It seems like that's the commercial I turn on every time I'm going to watch a Yankee game. <laughs> now he can fly. So he's at first. That'll bring up a De La Cruz, 16 homers and 59 ribbies. We mentioned the lack of power by the Marlins, 109 home runs. That's 27 in baseball. So they have the third best batting average as a team, but their runs per game 4.05, so that's 26th in baseball. This is a sport now where it's imperative to have power. They've actually been outscored by 38 runs this year, now 41. And their record, according to the Pythagorean theorem, should be 54 and 62. But they're 60 and 56. They've outperformed the numbers. Michael, I got to tell you the truth. When I went over the Pythagorean theorem in high school and in, in math class, I don't think that I ever, baseball was never part of the conversation. Yeah, I don't think they thought that in baseball either. How'd that leak, how'd that leak into the, the ballpark? Oh, everything does. <laughs> There's a breaking ball. Swung on a miss, one and two. Now, Vasquez, as we mentioned, is going to be the bulk guy, and he was warming up before the game as if he was starting. That's what Severino did on Wednesday as well. Popped up, middle of the infield. Calling off Bowers is IKF. Wow, I don't know if you saw that, but IKF almost took a header right there. He kind of tripped coming across the mound. This did not look like it was going to end well because he kind of lost his balance right there. And it's, it's then it's just a reach. Thank goodness for the Yankees. Here's Jesus Sanchez. 1 0. Hit sharply, and it's a fair ball. He'll go into the right field corner. Chisholm steaming around third. They're going to wave him home. Here he comes. He'll score. Moving to third is Sanchez. He's in there with an RBI double. 3-1 Yanks. Well, this ball was hammered, but it looked like it actually went off the glove. And slider down and in. See if Bowers got a piece of that or not, but boy, that's one thing, Michael. When you don't hit for power, you've got speed, and you see Chisholm Jr. off to the races. No doubt, he's going to score on a double easily. Goes as a triple and an RBI. Here's Jake Berger, and he pops it up. Bowers near the seats, and it hits the screen. Unplayable.
So runner on third, one man out. The Yankees do not bring the infield in. They will give up this run rather than have this turn into a big inning. Well, Hamilton has to take one pitch at a time, obviously, but Berger is a strikeout uh, machine. I mean, he has a ton of power. 26 on the year, but uh, he will strike out a boatload if you get him in a two strike count. Traded from the White Sox to the Marlins at the deadline for double A pitcher Jake Eater. Surprise pickup for the Marlins as he brings that home run power to the team. Now that's going to get a run in, and it's going to be more than that. As it bounces up against the wall, run scores. Burgers going for two. It's an RBI double. And the Yankees' lead is now down to one. It's 3 2. Uh, trying to get ahead. He hung a slider right down the middle of the plate. Pitch that Berger just hammered. Uh, Bader, no chance. I mean, when the ball's hit this hard, the ball just beats you to the wall. And it stays inside and just shoots it to right center field. See, Bader just cannot outrun the baseball there. So here's Joey Wendell. One hundred second, one man out. A strike. We're talking about Berger. It's, it's really the first time that he has extended playing time. He's kind of nickel and dime the last couple of years. He was a first round pick for the White Sox back in 2017, but he's really taken to this opportunity this year. He said 26 home runs on the year. What do you notice about Wendell? That's unusual, Paul. Well, it's not unusual if you know Jorge Posada because he has no batting gloves on, huh? Yep, refuses to use them. He said he will only put them on if he has a blister on his hand and only during BP, but in the game, he has to have no batting gloves. He's actually told all the teams he played for do not post pictures of me wearing batting gloves because it's not representative. <laughs> Ground ball. Torres. Moving to third is Berger. And that'll bring up Nick Fortes. Look, I don't know with the, the full retro uni here, but I, I don't know. Do those helmets match the teal? Because they're kind of like baby blue. Hmm. Grounded to third, IKF across the diamond. So the Marlins get two back after the Yankees put up a three spot. And we go to the third, 3 2 Yanks. Game, game parlay. Right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Start making every moment more. Really beautiful city. Yeah, what are the odds you were on that beach on the day off yesterday, huh? Not good. No? Considering you got in at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, that didn't work for you. Sun wasn't shining in bed. It's probably the best time. <laughs> you won't get burnt. Aaron Judge takes outside as we start the third. Lazardo's team got him two runs back after giving up that three run home run to Volpe. There's a change up, one and one. Judge calls time. Now steps back in. You know, I saw a note today, I'm sure you saw it too, Paul, that it, it just it, it just screams out how different the game is in 2023 than it used to be. Mm -hmm. In 1950, Joe DiMaggio, Joe DiMaggio. Joe D. Joe D, right. the Yankee Clipper. <laughs> he was in a four for 38 slump. That one's drilled deep to center field. Going back, Chisholm. Turning, looking, wow. see ya. Oh, what a blast by Judge. It's 4-2 Yanks.
You know, Michael, I hated to hear a Joe DiMaggio story interrupted, but that was an absolute missile off the back. Aaron Judge, 22nd of the year. Wow. That I'm superstitious, Michael, but I talked to Aaron Judge a little bit in the locker room today. I might have to go down and just say hello tomorrow, you know? He might seek you out. <laughs> oh, and one, what a majestic home run. 22nd home run of the year. 45th ribby. Yeah, that hit the back wall of the batter's eye, which is, uh, you know, like plants or vines or something out there. I don't, it just. That's so far, I don't even think they water it. High pop up on the right side on the run, Bell. He's there to make the play. Yeah, look at this. I mean, for the sound. See you. I mean, there, there's a few guys in the league when you hear this sound, you know where it's going. Like I said, this hit the back, back wall. Wow. That's kind of Joe D like Michael get back to your story. I, I, I can't wait. Grounded softly to third charging Berger across the diamond. Gets Stanton in the second out. Anyway Joe D was in a four for 38 slump. Now he's toward the end of his career obviously benched for the first time in his career because he was in a slump. He sat out for a week. Had enough. Well, they, they had enough. I guess Casey Stengel had enough. Wow. Now, I know he'd had heel problems and all, but this was a legitimate, you're getting benched because you're struggling. That's amazing. High fly ball. Sanchez makes the play. And that'll do it. No benching for that guy after he hits a long home run that almost pierced the roof here at Lone Depot Park. And tonight's picture was submitted by Tara. Her sons Johnny and Joey love watching the Yankees together. I'm sure they're having a good time tonight. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Farmers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Randy Vasquez takes over for the opener. Ian Hamilton, who gave the Yankees two innings. You see the numbers in his three starts here with the Yankees this year. By the way, we have a, uh, a distance on that home run, 464 feet. Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, there's a, a few guys in the league that can do things like this. Stanton being one of them, Judge being one of them, Otani. I mean, I mean they just have power that other normal, <laughs> normal human beings don't. Eighth longest home run in the history of this park. Now that would have gone out of the old Yankee Stadium where it was 461 feet to dead center mm -hmm. field. Well, I just had rumor that that was his longest home run of the year. So, you know, he's, he's got to be happy about that one. Three and two on Solaire, who struck out against Hamilton in the first. Strike three, so Lair down looking. And that'll bring up Luis Arise, and let's check out the Genesis hitter scatter report. Wow, he is the league leader. Came into the game hitting 369, going for back-to-back -back batting titles in a tough August. He has struggled. If you call 243 in the nine games, it, it, he had had to, it's very hard to hit 400, which he had going for a long time, but least in the majors only strikes out and you mentioned in the pregame Michael six percent of the time and to put context to that the average major leaguer is close to twenty three percent. Foul back. You know, he doesn't fit into the um, the box of what analytic teams want with very little bit of power, but 
He still has a high war, eighth best in, in baseball. So he's doing something right, and, and maybe that's the chains that we're going to see in baseball where strikeouts again frowned upon because he does put the ball in play. Mm -hmm. I think you know the analytics have taken over and I think that you're starting to come back in some sorts to real baseball again that's just, just another hard line drive but you know if you balance a lineup you it seems to me you're getting the boast of everything uh, you, you have some 300 hitters you have some base stealers you have to have a couple guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark and then you you know you you, you fill in with defensive guys too but to have all or nothing or all just singles hitters then you're very pitchable. Here's Josh Bell. Want to know? We were talking about Josh Bell and his power it wasn't too long ago. Most of his good years were in Pittsburgh. He was an all star in 2019. 37 home runs with 116 RBIs. So he's very capable of throwing up big numbers. This is his eighth season in the major leagues. Another guy that came over from the deadline from the Cleveland Indians. Two and two. Um, Bell. Switch hitter batting from the left side. Yankees lead 4 2. Three run home run by Volpe. And a solo shot by Judge. Dribbled slowly up the third baseline. Foul ball. Yeah, it just doesn't do it justice, Paul. Solo shot. As mm -hmm. if it just got over the wall. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You should get a couple points if you, if you go past 450, right? Something to consider. Don't they do that in home run derby? Don't you get like extra points or extra time or something? You get extra time with a couple over a certain number. Yeah. So Aaron Judge should get an extra at bat tonight because he just hit one farther than anybody could see. Berger beats Bell in the bag. And Randy Vasquez comes on and pitches a 1 2 3 inning. We'll go to the fourth. This is on his three run home run. 105.2 off the bat. 404 feet. It traveled. And it would have been a home run in all 30 parks. I think judges would have been a home run in all 30 <laughs> parks, including Yellowstone. <laughs> 2 0 on Volpe. Take a look at the league leaders brought to you by Citizens Made Ready. 15 plus home runs and 20 plus stolen bases. Kyle Tucker at the top. There's Anthony Volpe fifth. Grounded foul. 4 2 Yankees lead Miami. And tipped into the glove of Fortes. One away here in the fourth. You know, we talk about all the injuries to the pitching staff, Michael. Also, you know, another guy that you're missing again tonight, his second straight game, is DJ LeMayhew. Not in the lineup. Meredith, what do we got? Well, he was actually here at the ballpark yesterday, Paul. He had an MRI. He did go through a little bit of workout. Aaron Boone said the MRI didn't really reveal anything. So he's day to day. I asked whether or not he'll be available off the bench. And Aaron Boone said it's kind of a wait and see situation. So it doesn't seem like the calf is in terrible shape, but still not a full go. And that is tonight's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees, Paul. Uh, how smooth was that? Wow. I led you right into the, the, the medical report, Meredith. I feel pretty good about that. I really appreciate that Paul. Great work <laughs> out of you. Well DJ's like all of us. Day to day. <laughs> day to day. Day to day. Or missing. Missing the second straight game. No we're all here. right? We're all here. I just can't believe Meredith. I don't know if you feel the same way. I'm looking to my right and I can't believe Paul O'Neill. It's a road game. Here he is. Well, it's kind of a road game. I, you know I left had some house this right morning and drove down. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of a road game, but you know, all my kids and my wife are here, so right. it's 
Like home. But you know what? I, I did get off the exit and think, w which way do I go here? Yeah, the, the Deegan? Is yeah. This, it's hot for the Deegan. Michael, it was very hot today. Are you sure this isn't a mirage? <laughs> you know what? The way I feel it could be. Just a barrage. Isn't it? Little Tommy James and the Shondells. I'm very proud of you, Meredith. Not well, I have no game. idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Meredith, you know, Paul and I have, have a very good relationship, but he's kind of mad at me lately. Why? What happened? Remember I was, like, sick for a couple of weeks at the stadium? Yeah. He caught it. It's oh, like, no. It, yeah, it, the man was playing germ warfare back in New York. <laughs> See, sent me home. Next time I get medication for Michael, <laughs> I'll bring you vitamin C to try to kind of uh, fend things off. So that's my bad, Paul. I want to apologize. All right. Not for Michael, but for myself. All good. That medicine you got me didn't really help, Meredith. It took more medicine than that. <laughs> but thank you for the attempt. Never satisfied, Paul. I tried. It's not good enough. Imagine being married to this guy. Jody puts up with every day. Nothing's enough. Now oh, that's a balk. That'll move Bowers to second. What did we see? Uh, I don't see much. I'm still waiting to see. I don't know. I thought maybe he didn't pause. He did pause. Might have turned a little bit before he went to home plate like he was going to first. Manager of the Marlin Skip Schumacher. One and zero. Oh. Check that. Two and one on Higashioka. Three and one. Line drive, it's a base hit to left field. Bowers rounds third, he'll stop right there as De La Cruz comes up throwing. Second hit for Higashioka, first and third for the Yankees. Yeah, it's one thing you do as a hitter. You, you kind of get uh, you know, kind of ripped off of an RBI because the AstroTurf is so quick. Uh, you know, the ball gets to the outfielder. You know as an outfielder you're going to get a true hop. Ball hit really hard by Higgy. Finds a hole on the left side. Again, Rojas not going to take a chance with one out. Fly ball can still score an easy run. Well, this is a time where Cabrera, you know, you could even, if you're not feeling good at the plate, kind of push bun it to the right side, you know, just to get that run in. Or you can just line one up the middle and feel much better about yourself, Michael. Bauer scores easily. The RBI single for Oswaldo Cabrera. And the Yankee offense has shown up tonight. They're up 5-2. to two. Again, I think he did him a favor. Took a little bit off. Got it up in the strike zone, but Cabrera stays with it and just hammers it up the middle. Again, you're just, con you know, you're... you're Consecutive hits really keep a lot of pressure on the defense and on the pitcher. Another trip to the mound for Stoudemire. Soriano warming up for the Marlins. Miami's already down by three, trying to hold it right here, give their offense a chance. There's something about that name, Stoudemire. It just it still brings a smile to my face, Michael. Just one of the great guys that I was ever had the pleasure of being around and you know he was a pitching coach it's not like he was a batting coach but boy he was a big part of what happened in the late 90s here's counter Palefa two fly balls to center first and second one man out judge on deck and there's a strike from Luzardo Yankees have eight hits against the Marlins lefty. That good change, 0 and 2. Yeah, this is where baseball can be kind of, uh, you know, you, you get a misconception. I, IKF 0 for 2, two great swings, two balls hit hard, but nothing to show for it. Now you got a big at bat here, runner in scoring position. 
try to fight back in this count. Nice play by Fortes. Kept the runners at first and second. Lined in the left center field. It is a base hit. Higashioka scores. The throw comes to second. Cabrera moves to third. IKF with an RBI single. And the Yankees lead 6-2. Well, you just keep on keeping on. I mean, if you're Sean Casey over there, you got to be patting yourself on the back. Just good at bat so far from the Yankees. Again, a mistake. But even a mistake as a hitter, you got to hit it to do something with it. IKF dead. He doesn't foul it off. Lines it in the center field. Well, that's going to knock Lazardo out of the game. Third straight shaky start for him. He leaves first and third. And Judge coming up against Soriano when we get back. Audi dealer today. Wow. <laughs> this is pretty electric. Wow. Aaron Judge, was it 462 or 464? 464. Oh. Well, will face Soriano now. Fourth stint of the season with the big league club. Called up on July 4th for the fourth time. You see his numbers. Judge has walked and hit that mammoth home run. Yankees lead by four, six to two. Foul back. You know, Michael, what a difference a day or a day off can make. I mean, you remember the inability to drive in runs in Chicago. All the runners left on base tonight. Four for four with runners in scoring position with four RBIs for the Yankees. One and one. Yeah, they were three for 26 with runners in scoring position against the White Sox. They left 29 men on base in the three game set. Two and one on Judge. 22 home runs and when you consider the amount of games he's missed it's pretty pretty good. Three and one. Fouled away, 3-2. And the payoff, breaking ball, strike three, judge down looking. Let's check out the pitching decisions presented by Sage. Again, I mean, he got ahead, but then the, if you're Aaron Judge, you don't even expect strikes. And I think that's what happened when you get to 3 2. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, he's not going to give me anything. And it was kind of a back front door slider. Might have got the corner, might not have. But a good pitch by Soriano. 1 0 on Glaber Torres. He's 0 for 2. He has a nine game hitting streak. You got to figure, Michael, it is so hard to hit, be a major league hitter to start with. But then when you start expecting and seeing that you're not going to get anything to hit, it, you know, it, it's frustrating. And, you know, I, I saw Barry Bonds go through it through years back when he used to walk 200 times a year. But Aaron Judge, I mean, going into the game has got to know that chances are he's going to walk once or twice a game. Line to left field, fielding on the short hop by De La Cruz. Scoring is Cabrera. Torres with an RBI single. Torres with a 10 game hitting streak and the Yankees with a 7 2 lead. You know, if you really break down the Yankees this year I mean Glaber Torres has probably been your most consistent hitter. 
Uh, he, he just, you know, he's on a nice roll right now. But again, I mean, he's put together a long, you know, periods of times where he's gone through hitting streaks and just solid swings. 49th RBI on the year. Here's Stanton, one for two. And a strike from Soriano. Ten hits for the Yankees. Seven runs. They lead seven to two. Top of the fourth. Oh, and two. Swing and a miss tapped into the glove of Fortez. But the Yankees had three more. They lead 7-2. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth. Cup.com, check out the largest selection of authentic caps, t-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Yankees at MLBShop.com. It's a good looking view right there. Something about Florida sunsets, Michael. They're beautiful. We just stay on that, we'll see the sun just disappear. <laughs> Well, we got other things to see right now. Yeah, we might have a pitch by then. I don't yeah. know. That's what those two people are waiting for. Here's Jazz Chisholm Jr. Infield single in the second, came around to score. One and one. Randy Vasquez on the mound. Ian Hamilton open. Two innings. It'll be interesting to see how the Yankees rotation plays out. Rodon's on the IL. Herman out for the year. Today, Aaron Boone said not likely Montas is going to come back. There was some hope that he'd come back in September. Nestor Cortez shut down for a month not going to pick up a ball until september 11th severino struggled mightily it's it's unbelievable that the the one true guy you could depend on is, is garrett cole right and michael i spoke to aaron boone about that earlier today johnny brito was in the yankees clubhouse fly ball center field Bader puts it away. He will likely get the ball in some capacity tomorrow. Aaron Boone did not rule out the possibility of using an opener like they did today. Brito, at the very least, will be the bulk guy for tomorrow. Then Garrett Cole rounds out this series. Luis Severino remains in this Yankees rotation. If everyone were healthy, that maybe wouldn't be the case. But right now, the Yankees are, are short. They're giving Severino another opportunity. He'll pitch Tuesday in that Brave series, but they certainly have to find ways to piece it together. Yeah, you know, it's it's almost humorous. So many people are upset. Why do they keep giving Severino opportunities when he's pitching well? Meredith, the, they don't have enough starters. That's the issue right now, Michael. Carlos Rodon is here in Miami as well. He was throwing on flat ground again today. He's hopeful that it's not going to take much more than the 15 days on the IL. But still, he needs to go through the progression, and the Yankees need to see that he's healthy and the hamstring isn't an issue before they bring him back. But aside from that, they do not have a lot of options when it comes to that rotation. Well, you have to look at it. If you're Vasquez and Brito, here's your shot. I tell you what, the more you watch Vasquez, the more you like what he does. I mean, he throws strikes. He's got good stuff. You never know what to expect. You, you think possibly his first time out, you know, uh, to kind of beginner's luck. But no, he's thrown the ball pretty well every time he's touched it on the Major League mound. Coney took this series off. Is he starting to tune it up, maybe? A little comeback? Now, somebody asked me that on the radio show. <laughs> I said he throws one inning in the, uh, the old timers game, and he's complaining about how his shoulder, shoulder sore. So I don't think at 60 he's coming back. He's got a, he's got a new hip now, though. He can really push off. Yes, he's he good. Does. That's a good point. Outside to De La Cruz. Tell you what, I was, I was talking to a. Uh, David Wells the other day. He looks he looks in mm -hmm. unbelievable shape. And he's got one of those arms he could throw till he's like 80, I'm sure. 
De La Cruz walks with one out. All right, why don't we take a look at StatCast uh, 3D by Google Cloud to show us exactly what Vasquez features. Yeah, he's got a good four-seamer, and it, and it plays well. He's a good cutter, a sinker, and a sweeper. Uh, I said it, Michael, a oh. sweeper. It's really a breaking ball, but they call it a sweeper. But a lot of pitches, and he can throw strikes with all of them, which is a good thing. We're trying to take a stand against Sweeper, and you just bring it back. It just, it was there. I, I blurted it out, and I made a mistake. I apologize. John Smoltz will not say it. I'm not on, I'm not, I'm on the bandwagon, too. The Sweeper's been around for 100 years. It's just a breaking ball. Just another word. Different word. Sanchez popped up, shallow left. Oswaldo Cabrera is there for the second out. Here's Jake Berger. That one is lined to left field. It's a base hit, and it gets by Cabrera in a hurry. De La Cruz rounding third. They're waving him home. The throw from Volpe is. Not in time. It's another double and another ruby for Berger. And it's 7-3, Yanks. That was a slider last time, and this was a fastball. Cabrera elected to let this ball go to the wall, hoping he'd get a good carom. And it kind of stuck under the wall, which was kind of a bad break. And I said, you know, if you don't hit a lot of home runs, you better run the base as well. And see, that ball stays under the wall. Well, De La Cruz to score from first base. There goes a double in an RBI. Joey Wendell fouls it back. He grounded to second. That was in the second. You know, in answer to your question from earlier, Paul, I think the hats look very teal. I don't know the teal the Marlins on their their logo across their chest on the uniform. I, I, I just don't. I don't see the match. I, I think I think it's, it's it's spot on. Really? Maybe my monitor this little monitor I'm looking at. Right. It's about the size of my iPhone. That's another <laughs> thing. <here. laughs> Maybe I'm not picking it up well. There's a strike. One and two on Wendell. They've had a lot of different uniforms over the years. I think that's their best one. Mm -hmm. Although I do love the Red City Connect one. Yeah. That's a great looking uniform. You know, it kind of fits Miami too, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yep. Thrown behind Berger. Combined 14 hits and 10 runs. Just in the bottom of the fourth. Yankees lead 7-3. 2-2. Strike three on the inside corner. Wendell down looking. Marlins get one. They leave one. We go to the fifth. For more content. Audi scoreboard 7 3, Yankees over Miami. Soriano came on to get out of the fourth. He's still in there. And the pitch to Bader upstairs. Yankees have 10 hits. Every Yankee has a hit in the game today. As our buddy Ken Singleton would say, they, they've all been invited to the party. High fly ball, left field. De La Cruz puts it away.
So one down, that'll bring up Bulpy. Three run home run in the second, struck out in the fourth. One and oh. Breaking ball with no bite, 2 0. The Soriano fastball slider change, and his fastball can get it in the upward of 96 97. So a good arm out of the bullpen. Twenty point, 24 years old from the cradle of shortstops. San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican. Three and one. You see with that closed stance and his ability now to cover the pitch outside, he's going to see a lot more pitches inside. Him pounding him in this hole with bat. Three two. And the 3 2. Takes it outside. Uh, walk to Volpe. Well, it's the biggest rivalry in the WNBA. And Thursday, it's only on Yes. Watch the New York Liberty battle the Las Vegas Aces as these two super teams face off. Coverage will start at 10 on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. Liberty and the Aces, one and one against each other this season. There's 12 games left in the regular season for the Liberty. 20 stolen bases for Volpe, so Soriano's trying to keep him close. Yeah, also Fortes, not a good throwing catcher, only 14% so far this year. He's caught runners, so good guy to take a chance on if you can get a jump. One and oh. Two and zero on Bowers. So Soriano losing the plate here. Three and zero. See if they green light him. We'll never know, not even close. Two straight walks for Soriano. The Marlins, their relief pitcher ERA, 4.12. That's 18th in baseball. Starters, 4.19, which is 12th. So here's Higashioka, he's two for two. Paul, I'm thinking the uh, the air conditioning in this place not working right now. I didn't want to say anything because you always make fun of it. No, I'm lathered up. It's boiling. It in is here. boiling in here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is brutal. I'm glad to, to, to know you got a lather working. Wow. <laughs> that makes me feel good. 
Not coming close. Count 2-0. and oh. So eight out of the strike zone in a row. Mm -hmm. I knew you got quiet. You get quiet when you get hot. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Uh, see us way up here. Hey, folks. Yes, Meredith. She, she's fine, though. She doesn't feel the heat at all. She's used to Florida. Well, Paul lives in Florida as well. He's not used to it. I'm usually in a car with the air just blowing on <laughs> me. Or a golf cart with a little air blowing. I mean, this it's still in here right now. And he has walked the bases loaded. And a big opportunity for Cabrera. Last time up with this opportunity, he hit a line drive up the middle to break this game wide open right here. And another trip to the bound from Stoudemire. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Glad you got that over with. Yep. Uh, got that out of the way. Waskar Brazobon warming up. So Soriano has lost the strike zone. Let's see if Stoudemire helped them find it. And a strike to Cabrera. There's a strike, 0 and 2. And the 0 2. Swing and a miss, got him. Two outs. That's a big at bat right there for the Marlins to try to stay in this game. Cabrera allowed himself to get in a hole and then swung at the slider down and in outside the strike zone. Pitch to IKF is outside. And a strike, 1-1. One, one. Well, whatever Stoudemire said got him back in the strike zone. Breaking ball just misses outside, 2-1-1. George Soriano on the mound. I'm, I'm told that in the ballpark today, Alfonso Soriano. Oh, is that right? With his daughter, who is looking at medical schools. Nice. Boy, time goes fast. Wow. You're telling me. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. And he walks three, but works out of trouble. We're halfway through after four and a half. Yankees lead 7-3. Play the second game of this three game set against the Marlins. Coverage begins in three with Audi batting practice in the pregame. The first pitch will be just after four on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Cortez leads off, and there's a strike from Vasquez. It's at 420 tomorrow, Michael, you say? I think four. Four? 
what I'm told. The fit your schedule? You're okay with that? I'm good. Bader makes the play to retire Fortes. And back to the top of the order, and Jose Soler, Jorge Soler, I'm sorry, made his first career All-Star team this season. And won the World Series MVP for the Kansas City Royals. No, no, that against the... He was with Kansas City, then won it for Atlanta. My bad. Second season of a two-year, $27 million deal he signed with the Marlins. Yeah, he's been on two World Series teams, Michael. The Cubs in 2016 and the Braves in 2021. Tenth season in baseball. I mean, he's been around, and he's done some, some good things. And the funny part, he struggled with Kansas City, and then the Braves traded for him. Hit 14 home runs in 55 games and then won the World Series MVP. High fly ball. Bader says, I got it. And he does. Two away. So Kim Eng, former Yankee executive, the GM of the Marlins, when she was asked about trading for a rise, she said, I've been in the game a long time. I've seen the game go through phases. This type of hitter has always been attractive to me. He grew up right-handed, but he hit left-handed because he wanted to be like his fellow Venezuelan, Andy Chavez. Lined right at Torres. So Vasquez retires the Marlins in order. We're going to go to the sixth. Don't beat yourself up, Bob. Let's go around the majors. <laughs> Alec Manoa, second time he gets sent down to the minors. Hard to believe. Matt Olson, what a season. And the Seattle Mariners have been playing well. Seven game win streak, the longest active in the majors. And they've moved ahead of the Yankees in the wild card chase. Another team between the Yankees and Toronto. You know, I read an interesting article looking at Olsen there, and it was from Riley, Austin Riley, the third baseman. How, you know, he plays every day. And he said the time clock is actually helping the everyday player because you're not out on the field for three hours, three and a half hours. And just felt like he felt a lot better recovering day to day. And, and I thought that was extremely interesting. Well, you know, it's amazing, too. The Braves, I mean, you could say they're the best team in baseball. Mm -hmm. They never rest their players. There's no. no load management. They play them every single day. Yeah, they're used to, there's always been something in Atlanta that kind of goes against the grain. You remember Leo Mazzoni, you know, we had the four great pitchers. You know, he had Maddox, he had Smoltz, he had Glavin, Avery, and they would throw like every single day. Uh, I mean, there wouldn't be off days. They would throw every single day. And those guys, if you look at them, their careers, we're good. I mean, uh, as far as uh, health wise. Torres, RBI single as last time up, extended his hitting streak to 10 straight. We're in the six, seven, three Yanks. Another base hit for Blaber Torres. De La Cruz cuts it off in the gap. Torres going for two. He stumbled. The throw to second. Not in time. A hustle double. For Glaber Torres. You know, I was watching the route that De La Cruz took at this baseball, and it was straight across, and then he had to veer around it, which gave Glaber 
an opportunity. It's a really good read by him, but see how he had to round it off then, and it caught him to, to reverse pivot, and it's just a good read by Glaber Torres, a good hustle play. These are the things you can do when you're ahead in the game. You can take those extra chances. You know, a perfect throw probably gets him. Another stumble probably gets him too. Here's Stanton. Dribbled slowly to third. Berger, it hits the bag, and he tags out Glaber. What a fortunate happenstance for the Marlins there. It hit the bag, but right there was Berger, and for some reason, Torres tried to advance the third. Yeah, yeah this is, I mean, you, you have to watch the play. This ball wasn't even hit hard. The only break he was going to get if it got by by hitting the bag, but uh, there's no way that you can run on this play. Wow. There's Bader. Waved at that one. 0 and 1. Hey, watch Glaber. I mean, he just takes off thinking maybe he's going to wait back on it. But again, it hit third base right to Berger. Easy tag out. Kind of scratch your head at that one. Grounded to third. Much more conventional across the diamond to get Bader. And that'll do it. No runs a hit. And one man left. Game six, 2003 World Series in the Bronx. Josh Beckett pitching on short rest. Gets Posada for the final out of that World Series. And they celebrate on the field in the Bronx. One of two championships for the Marlins, 97, 2003. Josh Bell leads off inside as we start at the bottom of the sixth. Remember that 97 World Series, I think Levon Hernandez was the MVP. And you remember Eric Gregg? Oh, yeah. Oh, he was calling pitches two feet off the plate. It was, uh, I mean, you could have rolled it in there and got a strike that night. I'm hearing El Duque will be here tomorrow. One of my favorites. And that ball is crushed and gone. Josh Bell just hit it a ton. A solo home run, 7 to 4. Oh, Josh Bell, since he's come over here, all of a sudden is lighting it up. Talked about back-to-back uh, -back home runs his last time in Cincinnati from the right and the left side. I mean, as a hitter, when you know the outfielders don't even move, you know you crushed one. There is a hanging. Like a change up and just see it. I was thinking the same thing, Paul. Not one Yankee player moved. They didn't look back. <laughs> Chisholm takes a strike. Fifteenth home run for Bell between the Marlins and the Guardians. Hit sharply right to Bowers. One away. Well, obviously, Aaron Boone is going to get all he can out of Vasquez, but I mean, you're going to have to have a short leash. Every single game is pretty much make or break it now. And when you have an opportunity to win, That one's inside third and down the left field line. Cabrera will dig it out of the corner, and De La Cruz has himself a double. Hey, you look what has happened in the past you know, inning or so, and you had the bases loaded where you could have put the Marlins away. You didn't score. Then you give up a home run, and now a hanging slider ends up as a double. And now the Marlins are starting to feel like, you know, they can win this game, and you could have put it away. I know it's very hard to say that, but it's. It's just, it is what it is. So a trip to the mound to talk to Vasquez. And Jonathan Loazaga will begin to throw.
and Wandy taking a look. So Blake's going to stay out there as long as he's allowed to give Loisaga extra throws. Also, you're dealing with an interpreter, Marlon Abreu is out there. So here is Jesus Sanchez. He had an RBI triple in the second, came out of the score, then fly ball to left in the fourth. De La Cruz at second. Long set. Don't exactly know what Sanchez was doing there. It was a take. Why you would take on nothing, nothing, but he got a ball. There's a strike. Very weird gyrations at home plate. Almost Juan Soto-like. Yeah, but I, I think Higgy's doing a good job getting away from the breaking stuff. He had back-to-back -back breaking balls. And one, a change-up ended up in the seats, and then a slider ends up as a double. Uh, it looks like he's trying to work that fastball into the counts. Popped up. Here comes Oswaldo Cabrera, and he makes the play near the line for the second out. Yeah, this is a big save if you can get an out here to keep that runner at second base. And then I think Aaron Boone will be very comfortable going to his bullpen. He's going now. He's not very comfortable. Well, why not? <laughs> Just do it now, huh, Michael? So he's going to go to Lawashiga with Berger coming up. Berger with two RBI doubles. Runner at second, two men out. Vasquez departs. Yankees lead by three. Play, please play responsibly, must be 18 or over by your local Honda dealers and by Suffolk Credit Union, empowering your possible. All these pictures are, are so helpful for the Immaculate Grid. <laughs> Gary Sheffield, boy, I tell you, he, he had some years down here, too. He had years where every play, he was yeah. something else. Here's Lo Isaga. This is his second game since coming back. You see his numbers. And he'll face Berger. Boy, if you think about it, Michael, with all the injuries now with the starting pitching, it even puts more pressure on the bullpen, and this could be the key guy. Uh, you know, you've got Holmes, you've got Peralta, you've got King, but you now you've got a guy that arguably has the best stuff in the American League when he's healthy. Inside. Loose bodies in the elbow removed with surgery. And he's back. Big piece of this bullpen now. 2 0 oh to Berger. Yankees have a three run lead at 7 4. Still just the bottom of the six. One run in on the home run by Bell. De La Cruz at second with two outs. Hamilton the opener, then Vasquez, now Low Isaga. There's a strike. Bullpen well rested. Yesterday was a day off. The lefty Nordy getting ready for the Marlins. Felt it straight back. He was on that fastball. Wow. Burgers had great at bats today. He had the double to, to right center field and the double down the line. Yeah, good swing right there. Grounded right to Torres. So Loazic against Berger, leaves the runner stranded at second. We go to the seventh, the seven, four, Yanks. Mended memory support brand, 2018.
August 30th. Home run number 300 in his career for Giancarlo Stanton. He is closing in on 400. He's at 396. At 59 in one season here with the Marlins. Pitch the Volpe is inside 1 0. 14th big league season. Won the MVP in 17. Five time All Star. See the lifetime numbers. Two and oh. I mean, we think of Giancarlo now more of a DH. He's playing a lot of outfield now, mm -hmm. but he, he looked at him as a DH. Well, when he won the MVP, there was no DH in the National League. He was their right fielder. Fly ball. Sanchez gets out of the way as Chisholm makes the play. Yeah, I was looking at those stats the other day, Michael. And I, I I think I remember it was either 158 or 159 games played that year that he hit 59. You said there was no DH, so he played the outfield every single day. And look at that. That's an incredible stat. This is total home runs for the Marlins since 2017. He still leads just <laughs> off that one season. 0-1 on Jake Bowers. We're in the top of the seventh inning. 7-11-0 Yanks, 4-6-0. The Marlins. And you think of that incredible year, and th this is really known as, as a pitcher's ballpark. It's not really a hitter's paradise if you look at the numbers offensively uh, throughout baseball. One and two. Bowers one for two with a walk. Foul the way. Higashioka is on deck. He's had a perfect night. Two you talk two about being walk. underneath the baseball, Michael. See how that bat head is underneath the baseball. You always, as a hitter, I, I know there's a launch ankle involved now, but you really want to stay level through it or on top of the ball. And if you look at that, the barrel of the bat as it's coming underneath the baseball, not much good can happen. Two away here in the seventh. Here's Higashioka. But you can tell Charlie when you get home, right? Absolutely. What kind of years Charlie having? He's all star all star caliber. Not all star caliber, but he's he's having fun, which is the most important thing. At that age, that's all it is. But, but you know what? You get to the major leagues, having fun when, when you win. I used to tell Joe Torre that all the time. That's what Neverly tells me about how life is with you. <laughs> yeah. The 0 1 outside 1 and 1. Another lefty up. Two and one. Three and one. Well, he has a tendency to lose the plate. Then when he zeroes back in, he's okay. Soriano second pitcher, Lizardo started. And the 3 1. Popped up. Is Bell going to get it? Yes, he will. Yankees go down in order. It's time for the stretch. 7 4 Yankees. Yankees 4 6 0 for the Marlins. Hamilton open. You see what he did. Yankees 5 for 10 with the runners in scoring position. 3 for 23 in the White Sox series. Lozardo one out into the fourth. Jake Berger's had a big night. Bolpe. And Judge with home runs. Volpe a three run shot. And Judge with a shot that's still going. A solo shot. <laughs> Bob, I don't know if you just noticed, Bob back to his usual self. Just perfect. Yeah, he, did, he, didn't, he didn't say uh, Clay Bellinger. Nothing. Yeah. Stayed away from it. Total pro. <laughs> Joey Wendell will lead off against Loisica, who come on, who came on in the uh, the sixth to get the final out with a runner at second. Yankees up by three. 
First game of this three game set. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Wendell's 0 for 2, grounded to second, struck out looking. A pitch clock violation, so that makes it 2 2. Fly ball into left center, long run, and making the catch is Bader in front of Cabrera. Well, I know Cabrera's doing everything he can to become a natural outfielder, but if you're Harrison Bader, you got to realize. He's going to catch everything and as a center fielder you don't want him thinking he's going to run into you. If you're Cabrera you need to get out of the way and allow your center fielder who is a gold glove center fielder make an easy play. You always gladly let Bernie take whatever he wanted right. You know what Bernie could run better than me I said anything that you could get to is yours. That way we were in good shape. I could work on my hitting and <laughs> he could run them down. Huh? <laughs> the more telecasts we do together, I can't believe how much Coney said he used to look back and watch me working on my swing mm -hmm. in right field. <laughs> I'm sorry I affected him so much. I was ready by the time the pitch came. Two and one. You know, cute feature they have down the left field line here, their scoreboard. That's a replica of the scoreboard that was not a digital scoreboard in, uh, in their first stadium that they played in where the, mm -hmm. where the Dolphins still play. That was a manual scoreboard back then. Just over Loazga, there's a Torres, and he gets Fortes for the second out. Hey fans, up your fan engagement and earn real rewards with the new Yes Rewards loyalty program on the Yes app. Complete quest and earn points for watching the team that you love. Then redeem for awesome prizes and gift cards. Get the game with Yes Rewards on the Yes app. You know, thinking about that old stadium, I, at the time I played my, I think it was Pro Player, wasn't it? Pro Players? Had a lot of different names. Yeah. And it was a, you know, it was a football field that was just used for baseball. This to me actually as a dome or a retractable roof it's a very pretty ballpark a lot going on the seats in in, in the outfield are, are kind of decked were almost like the old Detroit Stadium so uh, some cool features in this stadium one thing is not is a cool stadium though yeah, it's that's, hot it's true we expected a lot better right? Expected some Freon to be involved. <laughs> Maybe the air went out. Who knows? <laughs> Two and one on Solaire. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Thanks, broken. Chopped the third. Nice hop for kind of off across the diamond. And Loazaga retires the Marlins in order. We're going to the eighth. 
on runners in scoring position. Yeah, Anthony Volpe started it off in the second. And it, they, they, we talked about the issues in Chicago, but not tonight. Five for 10 with runners in scoring position. When you do that, you usually have the lead. That's what the Yankees do tonight. Hyundai scoreboard. Yankees do have the lead. They're up 7 4, seven runs on 11 hits. Miami, four runs on six hits. And the Marlins will go with their third pitcher, Jorge Lopez. That's what he's done between the Twins and the Marlins. Came over to the uh, Marlins from the Twins for Dylan Floro. They picked up Lopez and they also picked up David Robertson from the Mets to bolster their bullpen. First pitch to Cabrera is low and inside, 1 0. One and one. Remember, Lopez was the closer with the Orioles. They traded him to the Twins at last year's deadline for four players. Unir Cano was one of them, and he's been a revelation in the bullpen for the Orioles. Tommy Canely getting ready. Two and two. Lopez deals. Foul back to the screen. Still two and two. Got the wave going here at Lone Depot Park. Going from the left field foul pole all the way around behind home plate to the right field foul pole. Arise. Double clutch, but makes the play. One down. Come out to Yankee Stadium on Sunday, August 20th, and celebrate last season's historic home run chase. First 18,000 guests in attendance. Going to receive a special Roger Maris number 61 bobblehead. The first of a two-part collectible set, courtesy of TikTok. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today at Yankees.com. Now, the bobblehead has an interlocking base that will match up with an Aaron Judge number 62 bobblehead. That's going to be given out on September 23rd. Well, that's pretty cool. That makes you eat. Now you got to go both days. You have right? to, yep. August 20th, the Red Sox. Uh, we're doing that game, Michael. Oh, yeah. One and one. Right back to Lopez. And they get kind of a for the second out. Here's Aaron Judge, one for three with a walk, two strikeouts, and a 464-foot home run to dead center. And a strike. Lopez has always had good stuff. 30 years old, eighth big league season. Milwaukee, KC, Baltimore, Twins, and now the Marlins. Half fastball will travel. Used to be a starter. They transitioned him to the bullpen, and he found his niche. He said he put too much pressure on himself as a starter. Two one, three and one. Pitchers seem to be living on the edges against 
judge. Nothing over that 17 inch plate. And as they drop farther deeper in the count, if you're Aaron Judge, you can't expect a fastball down the middle like some hitters do. They're just not going to give you that. He gave it there a little bit low, so another walk for Judge. And that brings up Glaber Torres. He's two for four. And during his hitting streak, 10 gamer, he's 17 for 38. There's that knuckle curve. 0 and 1. One one. One and two. Labor's been so good during the streak to, to not lose his balance, to see where the ball is and adjust to it. See that last swing, he kind of opened up and, and forced that ball. To, you know, as a hitter, you want it to be inside so you can drive it. The pitcher dictates what you can do with the ball by where they throw it. Just miss at 98 miles an hour. You know, Glaber had a 15 game hitting streak. And then we started moving close to the trade deadline. Pretty close. And you could see he was distracted and went mm -hmm. to a slump. Trade deadline ended, and then he started a hitting streak. Some players do not handle that uncertainty very well. Swing and a miss. Good inning for Lopez. Yankees strand one. We go to the bottom of the eighth. This year's virtually United Captain's Challenge. There's still time to lace up your running shoes for a 99 mile virtual run to benefit the Yankees Foundations. For just $99, all participants will receive a race bib, Captain's Challenge t shirt, race medal, two tickets to a select game, and a custom bobblehead of number 99 himself. To register, visit yankees.com slash run Yankees and use code JUDGE99. Tommy Canely. Will appear in his 28th game. You see his numbers. He'll be the fourth Yankee pitcher. Hamilton open two innings. Then Vasquez and Loazaga retired all four batters he faced. The final out of the six, one, two, three, seven. So here's Luis Arise. Change up is low, 1 0. Arise is 0 for 3. He's 9 for 40 in August, averaging 367. Foul the way. See, he asked the home plate umpire if that was up. He was told it was. Tap slowly, third base side, gonna be a tough play. IKF fires, not in time. Oh, it was that close because of a brilliant try by Kana Falefa. They got the, the benefit of the high bounce off the turf, but still, Arise runs well. 
puts it in play but you see this ball comes up so he can get rid of it quick. It's too long of a throw with a guy with good speed especially coming out of the box. Well, I don't know he might have got him Mike. New York is challenging the safe at first base. I think he did. I think he did. That even makes it a better play Mike. Yes it does. You can see ball and glove before foot hits bag. Arise said safe. Angel Hernandez agreed and the Yankees don't so they challenge. They haven't even done anything yet and Arise <laughs> is walking out the field because he just saw it on the scoreboard. Yeah, you can see him lipping out. I'm out. I want to make it obvious and run off the field but yeah that's not even close. After review the call on the field's overturned the runner is out. New York will retain the challenge. What a play. By kind of falafel. Again you get the, the high bounce what allows you to, to get rid of the ball but still everything has to be perfect. IKF especially leading off the inning here. This is a huge out for Tommy Canely and the Yankees. Big cut by Josh Bell. This is about as much as a shift that I've seen with the new rules. IKF all the way over by where shortstop should be. And Volpe almost behind second base, not allowed to get directly behind it. One and two. Strike three. Caught him looking at a change. Well, you know it's coming. You know you're going to get it in, in sometime during the count. It just does not matter. Tommy Canely has one of the better change ups in all of baseball. So here is Jazz Chisholm Jr. Volpe in the same spot but IKF has to be a little closer to third to guard against the bunt. An announced crowd of thirty thousand nine hundred and seventy eight here on this Friday night. Two and oh. You know Michael from outside when you're driving into this stadium you think man this place is just huge it's got to hold fifty thousand. Only hordes, you know, like mid 30s or something. It's really cut down as far as the amount of people that you can fit in here. Well, I think they were geographically challenged because it's in the middle of a city block. Yeah. I mean, there's houses around and it's tough to get in and out. So they didn't have that much uh, real estate to work with. It's on the side of the old Orange Bowl. A lot of memories in that old Orange Bowl, huh? And where Broadway Joe promised a Super Bowl victory? Mm -hmm. Promised and delivered. <laughs> two two. Swing and a miss. Strong one two three inning for Tommy Canley and we'll go to the ninth. We just saw it and, and, and no we didn't we, we saw this earlier in the game. Again just a tremendous play. Out in left field thought it was going to get out of here but no. De La Cruz brought it back. Steven Oakert. 
comes on. You tricked me. I thought we were going right, right back to the IKF play. Nope. Nope. And then we made it even more difficult. We held, we hid De La Cruz behind the defender logo. <laughs> yeah. Just to was, make your guess. He was running out from behind the table to make that play. Stanton will lead off. Stanton, Bader, and Volpe in the ninth. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Okert signed a minor league deal with the Marlins in February of 2021. And since then, he's been a great find. Six big league season, 32 years old. And that hits Okert and caroms out to nowhere. And Stanton will reach with a single. And let's see if Okert's OK. Well, let's see if this is the old fashioned shin burger. Yeah, it looked like it kind of hit the back of his leg. Calf burger. Yep. Hundred and thirteen miles per hour off the bat. Well, I'm glad he turned a little bit, but boy, if you hit your shin bone with that at 113, I don't know if you're walking around grimacing, you're probably laying down in pain. Stanton taken out of the game. Greg Allen will pinch run for him and then take over and right. That is going to leave a really nasty <laughs> bruise. Yeah, it's going to be there a while. Long after the Yankees leave town. So that'll bring up Bader. Yankees lead by three, seven to four. We're in the top of the ninth. The infield single, the 12th hit for the Yankees tonight. Warner goes. Foul back. Like he had it stolen. Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, as a hitter, you need to learn to just freeze. When, uh, you know, you're going to give a guy an opportunity early in the count, just freeze. Let the ball go. Plan on try to steal that base for you where you can pick up an easier RBI by, by just hitting a single. Sometimes as a hitter, you know, you're, you're so intent on seeing the baseball that you, you go ahead and swing. That's a ball. Second ball call on Marlon pitching. Yeah, two box in the same game, Michael. I don't know. What's the world coming to? Looked like a lack of a pause here. He just kind of. That turn, I guess, again. They are certainly not obvious. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Trying to trick us up here. Line to left field, it is a base hit. Allen will stop at third. The throw cut off by Berger. It's a single for Bader. It's his second hit of the night. First and third for the Yankees, nobody out. Yeah, Allen actually got a good read on this ball, but he had to hesitate somewhat. And again, the AstroTurf bounces the ball up. Rojas smart with nobody out to hold Allen.
Well, the Marlins will bring the infield in with Volpe at the plate. A little bit of a safety squeeze idea. He bunts through it 0 and 1. Anthony with a long three run home run in the second, his 15th of the year. Struck out in the fourth, walked in the fifth. Fly ball to center in the seventh. Light was coming from there, DJ LeMahieu. That from behind him? Reflection off something. I'm trying to help you out, Michael. I'm drawing blanks. Yeah, well, it can't be a UFO. The roof's closed. <laughs> I don't know how we'd get in. Runner goes. There's a strike. Stolen base for Bader. That removes the double play. The conventional double play. Yeah, with the infield in, it's going to be very hard for in infielders to recover and get back to second base. Good smart play by Bader. Three and two on Volpe. Bowers on deck. 7 4 Yanks. Slider fouled back. That loads the bases. So not only are the bases loaded, nobody out, but you know his calf is throbbing right now. <laughs> They've got to build an excuse then if they have yes, a big hit. Right? Yep. So lefty against lefty, here's Bowers, infield in, bases loaded, nobody out. 0-1. Oh Okert started his uh, journey in Grayson County College. Really struggled there, and a coach showed him video of Randy Johnson. Arm angle, how hiding the ball means something. Obviously he doesn't have Randy stuff, he's not 6'10". But he used to be over the top and then decided after watching that video, I'm not going to be over the top. I'm going to hide the ball and kind of come slinging it. Yeah, it's such an advantage when you come three quarters lefty on lefty. You just don't pick it up as well from a left-hand view. One and two. Swing and a miss. Bowers down on strikes for the first out. Got a really good pitch to hit right there. And I think that he's just trying to force it lefty on lefty. He gets to his front side a little bit too quick. Causes him to pull the bat underneath the ball. So here's Higashioka two for three with a walk. Infield backs up for the double play. And a strike. Again, a big base hit here. I mean, makes things a lot easier for the Yankees going into the bottom of the ninth. One and one.
Line drive, it is a base hit to left center field. Two run score. Volpe, halfway to third, now goes back to second, and he is out. So a two run single for Higashioka, and the Yankees lead 9 4. Well, again, I mean, big base hit, you're going to tack on runs, but uh, Anthony Volpe kind of got caught in between, and they, these are the things in a one run game that can mean a lot. And right there, he thinks he can hustle on the third, but he's clearly out. And not enough time to get back. First things first, though. Great at bat by Higgy. Three hits for Higashioka. Now has 30 ribbies. Cabrera lost a fly ball to left. De La Cruz is there. But the Yankees give their bullpen two runs of insurance. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Yankees up by five. And Michael, yeah, there it goes. Number 22 on the year, 464 feet later. Even a smile from the big fella. So that's not just play of the game, it's sound of the game as well. Yeah, saying. exactly. You got, you got two prizes for that. Ah. Yankees up by five. They pounded out 14 hits, so. Uh, 20 hits combined for both teams. Yankees with the lead. First game of this three game set. And although it's not a save situation after that two run single by Higashioka, they send in Clay Holmes to get the final three outs. Yankees seven for 13 today with seven ribbies with runners in scoring position. A far cry from what they did or didn't do in three games in Chicago. Spectrum One is fast, secure, and reliable. Internet for $49.99 a month. Free advanced Wi-Fi and a free mobile line. Restrictions apply. Visit Spectrum.com for details. Holmes deals low to Brian De La Cruz. One for two with a walk and a run scored. One and two on De La Cruz. Defensive change for the Yankees. Remember, Allen pinch ran for Stanton, so Allen stays in the game, plays left, and Oswaldo Cabrera moves from left to right. Two two. Waved at it. Swing and a miss. One away here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, fans, stay tuned after the final out for tonight's WB Mason Yankees postgame and get analysis from the studio and player reaction from the clubhouse. Plus, Aaron Boone on the manager's report. That's all coming up next on Yes and the Yes app. Sanchez takes low and inside, 1 and 0. Chopped to Torres. That's a nice hot. Marlins down to their final out. The reason that Holmes is pitching, he's not pitched in six days. Last time he pitched was August 5th at the stadium against the Astros. And for a guy who throws the sinker, a lot of rest is the worst thing. Yep. Kind of straightens it out, kind of overthrow. But, I mean, Clay Holmes, you, you can see, it makes it look so easy when he has this good stuff, his good sinker, good strikeout to start the inning with a slider. Berger wraps one foul.
Did he go? No, he did not. Two and one on Parker. Burgers had a big night. A couple of doubles, a couple of ribbies, and grounded to second in the sixth. That was against Jonathan Loisica with a runner on second and two outs. You can look at that as one of the key at bats in the game. If he gets that run and all of a sudden it's 7 5, and the Yankees are starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah, I think that's why Aaron Boone went to him. To get that last out, took Vasquez, and you know Vasquez, he was impressive again. I think every time he's taken the mound at the major league level, he's been good. Well, if the Yankees hold on, he'll get the win in this one. So now a full count on Berger. A lot of Yankee fans here, just under 31,000. And the 3 2. Ripped into center field. Faders there, puts it away, and the Yankees win. 9 4, much needed. They did it with an opener, they did it with power, and they win the first game of this three game set. Well, you, you say they need it, but they certainly do need it. And uh, big things happen. Big home run by Volpe, big home run by Judd, but most of all, Michael, 7 for 13 with runners in scoring position. That was the name of the game tonight. Again, it's not one game series. Back at him tomorrow. We've got to put another win in the column. Long home run for Judge traveling 464 feet. And Volpe with a big three run shot as well. We'll come back, wrap things up, and the post game after that.